Um, this video will look at downloading the Food Standards Agency scores and does data um, from Middlesbrough, transferring it into Excel and then into Tableau Public so we can create a map. Um, you need a copy of Tableau Public which is free. Uh, download the free one from this link rather than the paid for one. Um, there is a this will run on Windows PCs or Windows laptops. There is an iPad version, but frankly it isn't very good. Okay, so for the data uh, can be found at uh, ratings.food.gov.uk. Somewhat buried, frankly. Uh, and there's a link down here to download data reusable hygiene rating data, which comes across in a slightly peculiar format, which we'll have to convert it so we can use it for Excel. But that's a straightforward process. So we scroll down, uh, find Middlesbrough, right click, uh, save link as, I'm going to save it at the desktop. Uh, it should appear fairly soon. Yeah, there it is. Now, this is in XML format, so when you open it up, you get this very strange looking thing. XML is a database format, but don't panic because we can easily open this up in Excel. Just open Excel and drop this in, and it'll go through a couple of dialogues. Um, hopefully. So, you should see a couple of dialogues, and we just select the option that's selected, open this XML table. Okay, then it says the create a schema. That's okay. Click on okay. And there we have everything in Excel format. Um, the bits that are really important was, I guess, are the uh, business name, business type, and its location, which is mapped as longitude and latitude. Okay, so we now need to save this as an actual Excel for file. So we'll go to save as. Uh, again, we'll save to the uh, desktop. We're going to save it as Excel worksheet. Okay. Right, so that's the first part. Done. Okay, so we'll now import uh, these data from Excel into Tableau Public. Open up Tableau Public here. We just pick up the Excel file and drop it in. Um, there's a, a little dialogue over here for sheets. At the moment we've only got one sheet. If you had more than one, you'd have to pick which one you wanted here. But at the moment we've only got one, so we can go to Worksheet. Uh, okay, so we get a blank space where we're going to add our information, create a map, and then produce various controls. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is set up the longitude, um, which is a little strange, nothing seems to be happening yet, and the latitude, and it creates a map with a single dot centered on uh, Middlesbrough. Okay, we need to disaggregate this data. Let's go into analysis and turn off aggregate measures. And we'll see it suddenly appears a lot, a lot of dots, which are the scores on the data does data which has been mapped. It won't be just longitude and latitude, so we need to add some more information. Uh, okay, so I'm going to add business name to label. And we'll see that appears there. It'll tell us which one is when we hover over it. Uh, I'm going to add business type uh, and address line 1 and also rating value. So now when we hover over any of them, we've got the address, we've got the name, we've got sort of what business type it is, and this goes in the doors rating. Uh, since the rating is what we're interested in, I'm going to, in, in terms of scores on the doors anyway, I'm going to add rating value and drop it into colour. And we'll now see it's colour coded based on the ratings. So if we're only interested in rating value 0, we just click on that. Uh, rating value 2, or just to bring them all up. Uh, right, so the next thing we're going to do is add what are called filters, which will allow us to control what data we see. So we go again to analysis. I drop down the filters menu and we're going to add uh, we'll start off with what will we'll we start off with we'll, we'll start off with a business type um, so for example we've turned them all off and we're only interested for example in restaurants cafes and uh, catering facilities it'll bring up just a list of them similarly for schools and colleges and universities uh, put them all back on okay so the next filter we're going to add is uh, rating value so again we can in this case it's it's easier to look at two sets of rating values for example so one two three uh, bring it back to bring them up all back on and the third one we're going to add is the business um, location so we've got filters again and address line one now at the moment it's just give us a, a list of all the addresses which isn't particularly convenient what we want to do is be able to search so i'm going to click on this drop down menu and change this to wildcard match 
For example, as we do, we want to search in Linthorpe Road. Let's type in the bidding in the thing, and there's a list of all the businesses in Linthorpe Road. Okay, so I'll get rid of them and bring everything back up. Uh, press enter to bring everything back up. Um, right, okay, so we're making some good progress here. Oops. Um, so one thing uh, I'm going to recommend you always do when you set up folders is to make them apply to all worksheets. At the moment we've got, only got one worksheet, which I'm going to rename. Actually, it's got sheet one there at the moment, so I'm going to rename that as, you might expect, map. Uh, we can have the other sheets, and once we create a folders, it's often convenient to have them work across all the sheets. So we just go to address line one, drop this down, and apply to all worksheets using related data sources. Okay, so we'll do this for all of them. Uh, so we create new, 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 new folders and new sheets, and uh, new sheets rather new folders. Uh, this will work just fine. Okay, so we, a map there of all the ones that have information, location information associated with them. If we open up the Excel file again and scroll across, we'll notice in some cases they don't appear to have longitude and latitude data. That is, very, that is to say, where their location is. Now, in some cases, it's because this is a in other catering process, it doesn't even have a map, we don't know what that is. Uh, if you're interested in that particular detail, you'd have to do some digging to find it out. Um, let me scroll down to find ones which I know are more relevant to what we're interested in. So I'll click on those two and scroll across there. Um, so we've got a couple there which have addresses, so Bellevue Grove, Linthorpe Road, but don't have uh, long, longitude and latitude data included, so they can't be mapped. Well, the first one can, but not the second one on Linthorpe Road. Okay, so what we're going to do is create a new worksheet. So I'm going to rename as uh, Missing. Um, what we're going to do is just create a very crude worksheet with just a list of the ones we're interested in. Right, so what we're going to do is... Uh, Drop the business name in there. Uh, it's asking us do we, we want all the members because it's quite a big data set here. It's uh, 1018. Yes, we do want all. Uh, we can set up a filter here, but for now we'll just do it this straightforward way. Uh, going to add address line one and also longitude, latitude. It doesn't really matter which one. So it's not particularly informative here. What we're going to do is take latitude over there into the filters table. Uh, ignore more of these. Click on next. Click on special, and we're going to put up null values. That is to say, ones that don't actually have a value. Uh, right, okay, so in this case, we add, add a filter analysis. Uh, we're going to add the filter for address line one. Again, we're going to convert it into wildcard match. And when we type in Linthorpe, it'll bring up just the ones in Linthorpe Road. Uh, so the ones on Linthorpe Road that don't have a latitude fill, the latitude appears to have disappeared from there. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, drop it back in there. We can see they don't have a latitude. Okay, so that's straightforward enough. I'll go back to map. Uh, turn that off because the filter applies to all worksheets. So when we disabled everything but Linthorpe Road, it appeared there. Press enter. It brings it all back up. Uh, right, so next thing you want going to want to do is save this to Tableau Public Online. Uh, so we've got the file, save the Tableau public, um, save the Tableau public as, as as well, but in this case it's just the first time we've saved it. Uh, so it brings up a dialogue. You'll need to set up an account here, but it's not a problem. Um, it's free, it's not going to cause you any hassle. So I'm going to log in a minute, so I'll just pause this for a Okay, here's the online version of the map. Uh, I should caution, it can sometimes take a little while to upload data. Uh, the service of this are based in America and they work on a different sort of time scale to us and sometimes they may be doing maintenance on the servers while we're trying to upload data, particularly early in the morning, so be patient. Okay, so the maps appear here and the controls are there as well. Uh, so you can do the usual things you can do in Tableau Public. You can look at the top scoring ones, for example. Uh, lots and lots of top scoring ones. Um, the various tabs are in this little, little tab dialog up here, so we can click through to missing, go back to the map. Um, if you want to share, you click on that button, 
it'll give you the embed code if you're going to put it in a website or a blog or just the link uh, so you can open this from, from a presentation for example uh, and you'll be able to go through the data okay so there we are that completes that